The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Fourth chapter, text 14 through 19. Given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded in July of 1966 in New York. Nani Padma Phalis Viha Iti Mangyo Vijana Di Karma Vi Ma Sa Badhate Yeah. It can come to this forward. Yes. Karma Vi Sama Badhate. Now, the whole world is bound by his own karma action. <coughs> Everyone, every living entity, in the Brahma Sanghita there is a nice heart about this. There is a nice word just to yeah, beginning from the jar, there is a jar which is called Indra Gop. You know that among the living entities, the jars are in very minute form. You cannot see even if with your microscope, in a, in a space of one millimeter, you can find millions of germs. That is scientific truth. So beginning from the germs, which are called, please stop, please stop. Uh, beginning from the germs up to the uh, heavenly kingdom, the king of heaven is called Indra. And the smallest, minutest germ, it is also called Indra Gop in Sanskrit language. So, in the Brahma Sanghita, it is said that beginning from this Indra, up to that Indra. That means beginning from the germ which is known as Indra Go, up to the point of the king who is also known as Indra. All of them are bound up by the reaction of his own karma on his own, own, own work. Ah. Every work which are doing good or bad, ah, we have to and suffer and enjoy the reaction of our work. And so long we have to uh, suffer or enjoy the reaction of our work uh, as long as we shall go on like this, uh, so long we have to accept this material body. Uh, this material body is just given to us by the arrangement of nature's law for uh, the um, exact uh, um, status of suffering or enjoyment. Uh, just like we have seen different animals, they have got different process of eating. Say for tiger. Tiger, uh, their body is made for eating raw flesh and raw blood. So all the body is so made that it has got particular nails and jaws and teeth so that they can do that. Similarly you can see the hog, they have to eat the stool or they have got a particular shape of mouth so that they can easily 
do that. Now we are human beings. We are meant for taking vegetables and fruits. Now our teeth is just like knife. It can cut the vegetables and, and the fruits. So all the body, I mean to say, I am giving particular space to the body. Uh, a king's body, a poor man's body, uh, uh, a poor man, he has to work very hard. His body is very sturdy. He can work very nicely. But uh, a son of very aristocratic family or king, oh, his body is very delicate. He cannot work. He can uh, apply his brain in something else. So, so, so long we are, these bodies are made according to the different status of our work we have done in our past life. And next body is being prepared according to the work which we are doing now. But here Krishna says that as soon as one can understand the transcendental nature of Krishna's activity, he becomes free from the uh, uh, reaction of activity. Now here is the question that because we are now preparing ourselves to have our spiritual body or spiritual life developed and being free from this material uh, existence, therefore our duty should be such so that we may not be entangled again into this material body. Oh. That can be made possible if we are Krishna concept. If we study Krishna, what is Krishna? What are his transcendental activities? How his energies are uh, acting in this material world, a spiritual world? Uh, all is there. It is a great science. Krishna is a great science. So if we study Krishna's science with great attention, then the result will be that we shall be free from the reaction of our activity. This is clearly said here. Namam karmani limpanti name karma The Lord has nothing to do. Oh, he is full. He has nothing to do. <coughs> but uh, why he does just so set example, set example. Uh, he is not bound up by the works which he is doing uh, in the material world. This science has to be learned. Namay karma spalistriya. And anyone who understands the transcendental nature of Krishna, he is also becoming free from the reaction of karma. Evam gyatta khitam karma udvairapi mamakshvi kuru karmaiva tasmatam purvai purva karam khita. Now the whole spiritual process is to follow the example of the previous Atajas who had uh, attained and the success. This boy where from the time they start. Evam Gatta Kitan Karma Purbayavi Mamukshavi Guru Karmai Vatasma Tang Purbai Padma Karang Krita. Now there are the Arjuna, and Krishna is advising Arjuna that uh, if you act and fall in the footprints of the previous Akadas and previous uh, uh, great devotees and kings who had done in their life uh, Karma Yoga, uh, acting for Krishna. If you follow that principle, then you shall also become free from the reaction of activity. Because uh, Arjun was very much afraid for being entangled in the reaction of his fighting 
and Krishna therefore assures that you shall not be, if you follow, if you act or if you fight for my sake, then you will not be uh, entangled by the reaction of Kama. Kim karma kim karmeti, kim karma kim akarmeti, kavayoti atra mohita, tatte karma pravakshani jagyatta moksha se asuha. Now, people are misled what is karma, what is actually work, and what is not work. Eh, akarma. Kim karma kim akarmeti, kavayoti. Kavaya means great sages, great friendly persons, uh, great philosophers, they are also sometimes bewildered to understand what class of activities are genuine and what class of activities are non-genuine. That what Krishna says that I shall teach you what are genuine activities and what are non-genuine activities. Tate karma pravakshani jajgyatta moksha se asuha. Jajgyatta, if you understand the principle of working, then you shall get free from the bondage, material bondage. We have to work in such a way that we may not be entangled with this material bondage. Otherwise, as we have explained, this body. It is our material bondage and it is the result of our activity. Uh, so we have to perform our activity so nicely and so cautiously uh, so that I may not be entangled, I may be free uh, even in this life and taktadi ham punat janmanaiti. I can, uh, after leaving this present body, I will have no more to come into this material world. This science is being taught by Krishna to Arjuna. And the whole activity, uh, the whole activity is that if we engage ourselves, uh, as we find it in the eleventh chapter, last part, matkarma krit matparamo madhvatta sanga varjita nidvaira sarvabhuteshu jasa maneti pandava. Now, this one verse is sufficient to teach the essence of Srimad Bhagavad Gita that anyone who is engaged in my work, in my work, Matkarma Krit, then what is that my work? That my work is explained in the uh, last word of the, and the last instruction of Bhagavad Gita, the sarva dharma and paritajya manekam saranandaja. Uh, Arjun is taught, and uh, with the example of Arjun, every one of us is taught that we have to work only which is sanctioned by Krishna. Uh, sarva dharma and paritajya manekam saranandaja. That is the that is the mission of human life. But we do not know that. We do not know that. And because we do not know that, we engage ourselves with so many words which is concerned with the bodily and material concepts of life. So Makkarma Krit, so one has to do what Krishna desires. Just like what don't they? Krishna desired that he should fight. Ah, he Arjuna did not like to fight, but because Krishna desired, he accepted to fight. This is Krishna's work. Ah, that we have to select. Ah, now, what is the ah, work at the present moment for us? Krishna's work. Krishna is not present now to dictate that this is my work. Just like Arjuna was fortunate enough. He was uh, personally present before Arjuna. Lord Krishna was personally present and he was directing. Uh, but that does not mean that we have no direction. We have direction. We have direction. In the Bhagavad Gita you find that anyone who preaches 
the gospel of Bhagavad Gita to the people of the world. He, the most dear, uh, the dearest person in the world, Krishna. Krishna accepts him, the dearest person. So therefore, our duty is to preach the principles of this Bhagavad Gita, to make people Krishna conscious. People are suffering for want of Krishna consciousness. <coughs> Therefore, uh, each and every one of us should be engaged in the preaching war of Krishna consciousness for the benefit of the whole world. Lord Chaitanya, <coughs> whose picture you see in the front of our, this uh, store, Lord Chaitanya very nicely preached this philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Amar Agraya Guru Haya Taro Sattva Desh Jare Dakho Tare Kaha Krishna Upadesh. The Lord says, Amar Agraya, because he came with this mission to preach Krishna consciousness. So he says, just take my order and all of you, he becomes the spiritual master. Guru Hayya. Anyone who teaches people Krishna consciousness, never mind what, what he is and where he is, he should be understood the spiritual mark. So Lord Krishna, Lord Chaitanya gives order to everyone that Amar Agaya Guru Hayya Taru Sadbhadesh. Every country, every, I mean to say, province, you go everywhere and just preach this Krishna consciousness. Amaragya Guruhaya Taro Sabbadesh, Jare Dakho Tarika Krishna Upadesh. Krishna Upadesh means this Bhagavad Gita. The instruction given by Krishna. That is Krishna Upadesh. And Krishna Upadesh is also Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is full of uh, uh, instruction by which one can become Krishna concept. Similarly, in the Bhagavad Gita also, uh, we receive the instruction how we can become Krishna concept. So Lord Chaitanya selects these very two particular books, Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, and he asks everyone in any part of the world to take up this matter very seriously and preach in the world. That is the direct order of Krishna. So if we take up this missionary work to preach Bhagavad Gita as it is, without any interpretation, or without any motive behind it, as it is, as Krishna says, uh, we should present as it is. People <coughs> misrepresent Bhagavad Gita by their own interpretation. That should not be done. Bhagavad Gita as it is should be presented. Before the people of the world, they are suffering for want of Krishna consciousness. And as soon as they become Krishna conscious, their life becomes happy. So this is the mission of uh, uh, this uh, society, international society for Krishna consciousness. As Krishna advises, Sangha uh, Varjita, uh, <coughs> You should not have any attraction or any attachment for this worldly activity. Uh, if you have got attachment or attraction for this material activity, then you cannot have, Krishna, you cannot become Krishna conscious. But that does not mean you should be inimical to the uh, people of the world. No. It is your duty to give them the highest instruction, spiritual instruction, that you become Krishna conscious. And try your best. Try your best. Nidvaira. You should not be anyone's enemy. Others may become your enemy. Because it is quite natural. Anyone who comes with the message of the Supreme Lord, there are persons who become his enemy. Just like Lord Jesus Christ, he came. His only fault was that he was preaching the message of God and people, some people, not all people, became his enemy and he was crucified. Yes. This is the murder. 
uh, anyone who comes as the most, and uh, I mean to say, beneficial friend of the world, people take him as the enemy, and they do the same mistake again, so that they are bound up again by their own work, and they remain in this material world to repeat birth and death, one after another, one after another. So we shall be very much cautious. Uh, we should not miss this chance of this human body to become Krishna consciousness, to become conscious of Krishna. <coughs> So, uh, that's why uh, we must know how to work, how to work. King Karma, King Akarmeti, uh, if we do not know how to work, then we shall be entangled in this material uh, uh, activity. Therefore Krishna says, Sangha Varsha. Of course, a Krishna conscious person, he also acts just like another uh, material actor. But because he was in Krishna consciousness, therefore he is not bound up. Just like, take the example of Arjuna. He also fought just like ordinary military man. But because he fought in Krishna consciousness, therefore he was not bound up by the reaction of such fight. Fighting is not necessary. Fighting is not necessary. Peace, peace is necessary. But sometimes peace is disturbed. At that time, fighting is also necessary. You cannot, you cannot absolutely give up the process of fighting in this material world. That is not possible. Because there are persons who will create trouble. Just like we are experiencing. We are not going to do any harm to anybody, but sometimes we are coming and creating disturbance. So these disturbing elements are there, and this is uh, always there. The material nature is like that. Therefore, fighting cannot be abolished. In the when it is necessary, absolutely necessary. In the battle of Kurukshetra, uh, Lord Krishna advocated this fighting because it was absolutely necessary. So anything, it does not matter what it is, when it is sanctioned by Krishna, it has no reaction. That is the real work. Other, anything which we do, which may be very good work in the estimation of this material work, but uh, that is bound to make you entangled in this material work. This secret one should learn. Karmano jabi bodhabhaṁ bodhabhaṁ jabi karmana akarmanascha buddhabhaṁ gahano karmano gati. Karmano ah. gati, the path of karma is very intricate. Therefore one should understand what is actually karma and what is uh, akarma and what is vikarma. Uh, knowing this one should perform uh, karma. But one thing is that if we simply engage ourselves in Krishna consciousness, that everything becomes clear. Otherwise, we have to make discrimination, what I should do, what I should not do, so that I may not be entangled. Just like in ordinary life, we, whatever we do, we sometimes uh, <coughs> we may uh, unconsciously doing something which is against the law, and therefore we become bound up. Uh, uh, by the laws of this state, and uh, sometimes we are in trouble. Uh, so similarly, in the laws of nature also, the laws of nature is very strict. Uh, there is no excuse. The laws of nature is very stringent. Just like the fire, fire it burns. That is natural. This is the law of nature. So even a child, it touches fire. The fire does not excuse that because it is child. Uh, his hand may, be, may not be burnt. No, that is not possible. So we have to make our work very cautiously. We have to select our work very cautiously. Otherwise, uh, the stringent laws of nature uh, will react and we shall be bound by the laws of material nature and suffer. The Lord says, the karmana jodhi bodhabdham, one should understand 
how to work and one should understand what is not to be done akarmanascha bodhabham karmano api bodhabham bodhamancha vikarma karma akarma dhikarma there are three things karma means prescribed duties prescribed duties that is called karma and akarma vikarma means doing against the prescribed duties that is called vikar and akarma means uh, uh, is something doing which has no reacts that is not of, of course in the execution of such work it appears to be working but practically it has, it has no reaction that is vikarma and that vikarma is uh, um, <coughs> when we act on account of the supreme that is when we krishna karma ki when we work under the direction of krishna that has no reaction otherwise karma one should do prescribed duties and one should not do which is not prescribed for example for example uh, just like the state the state has got some laws now suppose if you commit murder it will be you will be hanged that is the state law so if you against the state law you commit some murder you will be hanged this is vikarma and and i should be cautious but when the state orders it says that you go and fight kill the enemy that is neither karma nor vikarma but similarly uh, uh, when we act under the direction of krishna that is uh uh akarm that means that karma that kind of activity has no reaction otherwise we shall have to act very cautiously so na- so that i may not be entangled with uh, the uh, reaction of my karma karmani akarma ja pashet akarmani ta ja karma sa buddhiman manushe su sa jukta kisya karma ke now here is a nice word the lord says one who can see karmani akarma any work which is being done but it has no reaction karmani akarma i am doing something but the ultimate result of that work has no reaction one who can see like that karmani akarma ja pashe akarmani cha ja karma and akarmani means one who is trying to avoid the reaction of karma but he is being entangled in karma sa buddhiman manusheshu he is the most intelligent person sa jukta krishna karma ke sa he is adopted the krishna consciousness and therefore and uh, after doing so many work krishna man all sorts of work still he is free karmani uh, akarma even working just just see the arjun arjun is fighting and the other party duryodhan is also fighting now how you can understand that the arjun is free from reaction but duryodhan is not free from reaction uh the fighting is both, both parties are fighting uh, externally ephemerally we can see simply that they are fighting but he is uh, bound up by reaction who is not bound up by reaction arjuna is not bound up by bound up by reaction why he is fighting under the order of krishna uh, so we have to see like that who is working with krishna consciousness anyone who is working krishna consciousness we should see that he is not being bound up this is called karmani akarma <coughs> akarma means which has no reaction so although i see somebody is working but because he is working in krishna consciousness therefore he should be understood that his work is not producing any reaction so this intelligent vision uh, um is recommended here by krishna the sa buddhima anyone who is working and who can see such work uh, who can understand such work sa buddhima manushe 
in the human society is very intelligent. It's very intelligent. Ah. Ah. Otherwise, sometimes bhakti, the devotional service of the Lord, just like I give you a crude example, just like a boy, he is flying kites and uh, he, he is moving his wheel containing the thread. Now, from a distant place you will find that he is moving in thread, but uh, moving his wheel. But sometimes moving his wheel is getting down the kite and moving his wheel he is getting uh, uh, higher and higher the kite. So from distant place we can see that the there is moving of the wheel, but the action is different. Similarly, simply by seeing the movement of a person that he is also acting, that is not final judgment. We have to see what sort of acting he is doing. He is acting in Krishna consciousness. If we can see a person is acting in Krishna consciousness, then we can understand that he is free from the reaction. And if he is not acting in Krishna consciousness, but <coughs> externally, from our material estimation, we can see uh, that, oh, he is doing very good work. He uh, is doing good just like Arjuna. When he first uh, refused to work, uh, refused to fight, the mind of Krishna, uh, it is not possible for me to fight with my relatives, brothers. Uh, I am not going to fight. But this from material estimation, this uh, conclusion, uh, this decision of Arjuna is very good, very good. So materially, from material stand of the same point of view, that he is not going to commit non-violence, violence. He is non-violent. He is very good man. But <coughs> from spiritual point of view, uh, it is not so. From spiritual point of view, it is not so. So one has to see uh, simply by external features that one is working and one is not working. That becomes what is the standard of one? And uh, what consciousness is worth? If he is working in material consciousness, then he is being bound up. However good may be that what? Uh, he is being bound up. Now what is the binding reaction of uh, good material work? Just try to understand. The good material work, suppose you have done most charitable work, munificent work, and you have started uh, so many, um, I mean say, philanthropic institution. That's all right. This is uh, from material estimation. These things are very good work, but you are being bound up. You are being bound up. In which way you are being bound up? That these things are called punna karma, pious work. When you do pious work, you get four results. What are the four results? Janma ah, isadya sutasri. Janma isadya sutasri. If you do pious work, you can get reaction in four ways. You can get your birth in a very nice family. Ah. Just like ah, in the family of a Brahmin, in the family of a, ah, a rich man, for ah, pious work one can get Janma. And Aishadya. Aishadya means you, be, you can become very rich man by pious work. Janma is Sutta. Sutta Suta means you can become very learned scholar. Ah. These are the results of pious work. Janma is Sutta Sutta and free, you can become very beautiful ah, by pious work. These are the results of pious work. Similarly, just the opposite. <coughs> if you do visas work, then you, you have to go to the lower lower class family or even the an, an, animal family, uh, lower class bird, uh, or uh, become a fool, uh, illiterate, and uh, become uh, not very good looking. Uh, so many things that these are the reaction of pious and vicious work. Now, <coughs> taking it for granted that I am doing all pious work, that's all right. <coughs> and I am getting uh, my birth in a very rich family or very pure family, just like Brahmin family or something like that. I am getting myself very uh, good education. I am very grateful to see. And I am very rich man. All these. But this, uh, our point is that suppose if you are rich man, 
Suppose if you are very learned, man, but you are not free from the stringent laws of material world. Uh, the whole point of vision should be targeted there, that I am not going to be under the stricture of this material world. If we miss that point, then we shall be captivated by the uh, um, uh, aesthetic family or a good education or beautiful body or richness, we shall be. One should understand that in spite of having all these facilities of material life, I am not free from four things. Janma, I, Janma, Mrittu, Jarabhyadi. Janma, Mrittu, Jarabhyadi. I am not free from four, four these things, material uh, laws of nature. Uh, what is that? I am not free from repeated birth and death. I am not free from old age. I am not free from diseases. Uh, therefore Krishna has recommended in the Bhagavad Gita that Abrahma Bhagavan Lokan Puravati Arjuna. My dear Arjuna, if you go <coughs> up to the highest planet, which is called Brahma Loka, where there is long duration of life uh, and all other enjoyments, uh, there are thousands and thousands of times better than enjoyment here, but still, Abrahma uh, Bhagavana Lokan Puravati Nasa, then you have to come again. The reputation of birth and death is there also. Therefore, your aim should be Madha Jadgatyana Nivartante Tadbhama Paramamama. You have to go back to my planet, my kingdom. That will make you perfect. So, this, this work, good work or bad work, from the material point of view, may be uh, superficially uh, very good. Uh, but what? How long I shall remain a rich man? How long I shall remain a beautiful man? This is not my permanent life. Suppose if my life is for hundred years, so I, I can be, remain a rich man, I can remain a learned man, I can remain a rich man, beautiful man, say for fifty or sixty or hundred years, but your life is not for hundred years or sixty years or thousands years or millions of years. You are eternal. You have to attain your eternal life. That is the whole problem. So that problem you have to solve. That problem can be solved when you are Krishna conscious. So that by Krishna conscious, when you leave this body, you will no more have to come to this material world and accept this material body or suffer and enjoy thereof. That is the point. The point is very <coughs> difficult for common man, but this is the point. This is fine. I have to avoid this material existence altogether. That is the point. <coughs> it, is the, it is not the question of improving my material condition. That is not the solution. If I just like in a prison house, if you want to improve your condition, you become a very good prisoner and the government gives you a class status. There are three classes of status in prison life. Uh, some are, some are uh, suffering in the prison life in the A-class status. Some of them are suffering in the B-class status. There are also classes. Just like when some political leader is put into prison, uh, they are given A-class status. But uh, a sane man, a sane man should not be satisfied by becoming a, an A-class prisoner. A class prisoner. So we are in this material world. Some of us are the A class prisoner, some of us are B class prisoner, some of us are C class prisoner. So to become an A class prisoner from C class prisoner is not the solution of our problem. The problem should be solved that let me become completely free, completely free from the prison life. That is the whole problem. Karmaniya karma ja passet, a karmanita ja karma, sa buddhiman manasesu, sa jitta krishna karma. Anyone who can understand the process of karma, the process of work in this way, is the most intelligent person in this world. Most intelligent person. Not that a person 
plus pass MAP is the admission from the uh, university uh, uh, of any um, uh, country. The person who understands this uh, uh, problem of life, he is the most intelligent person. Uh, that we should love. He is the most intelligent person. Yasya sarve samarambha tama saṅkalpa buddhita jyanāgni dhaksa karmanam tamahu pandita dhudha. Ah. Pandita, pandita means lāne and buddha means one who is twelve hearts. He is called buddha. Buddha, this very charm, he will find in another place of Bhagavad Gita in the tenth chapter. Buddha bhava samanita. Aham sarvasa prabhava matta sarvam pravartate iti matya bhajante maam buddha bhava samanita. That Buddha you will find in the tenth uh, chapter. And, and the same Buddha, Pandita, Pandita and Buddha. Pandita, according to Bhagavad Gita, Pandit, Pandit means land and man. The Sanskrit word. Pandit means, and Buddha is well versed. Now, who is well versed and who is Pandit? Uh, a very learned man from, uh, by academic education may not be uh, a, a learned man according to the view of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, Bhagavad Gita says, he is the learned man who can see uh, everyone on the equal footing, equal level. Vidya Vinaya Sampanni Brahmani Gavi Hastini Sunitecha Sapakecha Pandita Samadarsi. A Pandita. Uh, Pandita can see. Pandit means a learned man can see that here is a learned Brahmin. In India, according to Vedic civilization, a learned Brahmin is considered to be the topmost man in human society. So therefore, uh, he is taking the example that here is a very learned Brahmin, Vidya Vinaya Sampanni Brahman. Not only he is Brahmin, but he is very gentle. Uh, Vidya means what is the result of Vidya? Education means one becomes gentleman. That is the result of Vidya. Uh, if one is not a gentleman, then uh, uh, his learning is not accepted according to the basic vidyat. So Pandita means that one he is learned and gentle. So another Pandit sees Vidyavinaya Sampani, a Brahmin, learned and gentle. Vidyavinaya Sampani, Brahmani, Gobi, and a cow. Vidyavinaya Sampani, Gobi, and an elephant. And Sapake, Sapake ka Sunicheta. Uh, papake means uh, that there is a class of men who eat dog. They are uh, counted among the lower class in India. Papake is a sunita. Sunita means dog. So dog also not taken very good at it in the society. But a pandita, either a dog, either a cow, either an elephant, either uh, uh, a, I mean, a dog eater or a lion of drumming. He sees all of them on the same level. That is Pandit. Why he sees on the same level? Do you mean to say that a learned Brahmin, a high-class Brahmin, he is just like as good as a dog? No. A learned Brahmin is not as good as a dog. But how, how then the Pandita sees on the equal footing? Ah, oh, because he does not see on the skin, but he sees on the spirit. Therefore is Pandita. One who has learned this art to see any living being, only the spirit, he sees that here is a living being. He is a spiritual spark, he is a spirit soul, but he has got a different body on, just like in the Bhagavad Gita. It is said that Pasam Sujinan, this body is just like our dress. Ah. Suppose a very uh, uh, learned man has come in a, a savvy dress. Do you think that he should be regarded? It is known, of course. Uh, 
Huh? Uh, just like uh, our dish, uh, sometimes we dress. It is not very costly dress. Uh, it is a lion cloth. It is very cheap. Uh, but sometimes uh, people misunderstand that here is a beggar. And sometimes uh, we are respected. So simply by dress we should not um, see any living entity. Whether either he is a dog or he is a and oh, in the estimation of the society, a lower class man or a very high class man or a cow, but we shall see that here is a spirit soul. Anyone who can understand the spiritual uh, vision of life, he is Pandita. He is Pandita. Uh, and according to Chanakya Pandit, Chanakya, he was a great politician, and he says, now what is the standard of education? standard of education. Hmm. Now, he has given very nice three words. Three words for standard of education. He is perfect in education. He says, Mahasribat paradareshu paradarbeshu losrabat atamat sarvabhuteshu ja pasyati sa pandita. Pandita. This pandita. Ah. This pandita explanation of pandita. Now, who is a pandita? Now, uh, Mahasivat Paradarish. He is the learned man who sees all women as his mother. Except one's married wife, one should see every woman as his mother. Mahasivat. Mahasri means mother. Bhat means just like. Mahasivat Paradarish. Paradarish means other woman, except one's own wife, married wife. Mahatribat Paradarishu Paradarbeshu Lostrava. And other property should be accepted just like we few garbage in the street. Uh, just like we don't care for all the garbage. Simply, if others money and others property is there, sometimes we hanker, we should think so oh, this or nonsense. <coughs> just like garbage. Uh, Mahatribat Paradarishu Paradarbeshu Lostrava Asava Sarva Bhuteshu. And Lostra means uh, that uh, mm. rubble, just like stone rubble. There are so many rubbles and, and they strong over the street. Nobody cares for that. Similarly, if others' money is thrown over the uh, street, nobody, he should not care. He should not tell him, oh, there is some money, let me take. So, Mahatmat Paradayasu Paradayasu Lostra, Akavat Sarabhuteshu. And he should see everyone. This Atavat Sarvabhuteshu was preached by Lord Buddha. This philosophy, this one philosophy was uh, and I mean, is taught throughout the whole world by Lord Buddha. That there should be no animal king. Atavat Sarvabhuteshu. No living entity should be given suffer, even by words. Uh, that is real life. Atavat Japashati, one, one who has such vision of life, he is called learned. He is called that. Not by educational qualification. One who has acquired Palena Parishya. Education is understood how far a man is educated by his behavior, by his vision of life, it will be estimated. Not by the degrees. Yeah. Similarly, here also, here also, uh, the, uh, the, the word Pandita, uh, Pandita has been used, so I have just given you some explanation of Pandit uh, from different angle of vision. And Buddha also, Buddha, say in Bhagavad Gita you will find the definition of Buddha. Buddha means well versed. Uh, well versed. Well versed means who has got studied uh, uh, lots of uh, books of knowledge. He is called Buddha. Now everything, whatever we are doing, the ultimate proprietor is Krishna. That is Krishna That is Gyanavali Dardha Karma. So we can have simply, just like in an office. In an office so many people are working. Uh, hundreds of people are working. Everyone is conscious that whatever we are acting, whatever profit we are making, that belongs to the proprietor. Then there is peace. Uh, as soon as the cashier 
seeing so, I have got so much money, I am the proprietor. Oh, then whole trouble begins. This consciousness, Krishna consciousness, if we understand that I am uh, a very rich man, uh, I have got so much bank balance, I can use it for my self gratification. That is karma. That is karma. Now. But if we understand that whatever I have got, it belongs to Krishna, then I am liberated first. I am liberated. This is Krishna. You will have the same money under your custody. It doesn't matter. But as, as soon as you think that I am the proprietor of this wealth, then you are under the influence of mine. And as soon as you think ah, they, they, they may have to, Krishna is the proprietor of all these things, then you are free. The Kamaraga Vibharjita, Jnana Nidhartha Karmarama, Tamahu Panditana Buddha, one who thinks like that, one who is uh, situated in that consciousness, Pandita Buddha, he is learned and he is actually a man of knowledge. This is the whole problem. Tamahu, uh, tam, he is known as the Pandita. Pandita means one who knows things as it is, not to take a thing wrong. So that consciousness has to be in form, not only individual, but also uh, community-wise, society-wise, nation-wise, uh, all over the world, then there will be peace. If you want real peace, bhoktāraṁ yagyatav sāṁ sarva-bhūta mahistaraṁ śrīdam sarva-bhūtāraṁ jyāttāmāṁ sānti vichyati. Uh, we are just trying to be philanthropic altruistic, and we are uh, trying to become friends of my countrymen, of my society, of my family. Uh, but that is a wrong conception. Uh, the real friend is Krishna. I can work on his behalf. Uh, how I can work? Do you try, if you actually want to do something good to your family, then you try to make all the members of your family Krishna conscious. Then your life will be successful. If you want to make them otherwise, without Krishna consciousness, then you will be serving, not serving, you will render them defense. Because any knowledge will not help your wife or children, any knowledge, any amount of knowledge will not help. His real problem, what is his real problem, we do not know. Uh, the real problem is that we do not know. The real problem is janma mitya jara vyadhi. The Bhagavad says, pitāna sasyāt, janani sasyāt. One should not try to become father, one should not try to become mother. Why? namo chai yadya samuti kamrittam one who is unable to save his children from the grief of material grief. That should be Krishna consciousness. If you are a responsible father, then if you are completely knowledge of Krishna consciousness, then your duty will be that these creatures, these innocent creatures now who are playing in my, at my home, as my children, as my boy. Uh, now, this life should be the last installment of his transmigration from one body to another. I shall train these boys in such a way that after this body he will have no more to go into the cycle of birth and death. That is Krishna Bhagavan. That means you have to make yourself expert then you can help your children out. Then you can help your nation out. Then you can help your society out. If you are yourself ignorant, then andhādhatāṁ deyupaniyamāna deshi satantra urudhāmi vajjā Just like a person who is uh, on the 
tightly bound up hands and feet. Suppose we are sitting here, ah, some people, twenty-five gentlemen, ladies, and offer all our hands are tightly bound up by some rope. And if I want to make you free, although my hand is also tightly bound up, is it possible? No. At least my hand should be free. Then I can open, I can untie your binding by the rope. So unless one is free man, and what is that freedom? One, he is Krishna conscious, he is free man. And nobody is free man. Devi Gesha Gunamai Mamu Maya Dhrutya Mami Vaja Prapadanti Maya Metan Karantite. Everyone is under the spell of material influence. Nobody is free. And one who, is, who has surrendered unto Krishna, one who has taken Krishna consciousness, Maya has nothing to do. Maya cannot touch. Just like if you come in front of the sunlight, there is no question of darkness. There is no question of darkness. If you place yourself in light, sunlight, not this artificial light, this artificial light may be extinguished at any time, but sunlight is not like that. The Krishna is just like sunlight. As soon as you come in front of sun, oh, there is no darkness. So there is no ignorance. So there is no mind. Maya means solution. So jnana agni dagsa karma na tamahu pandita buddha. In this way, we have to become buddha. Buddha means learning, learning. And in fine, in the tenth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, that the Lord says, who is buddha? And what are the symptoms of buddha? Buddha means learning. What are the symptoms? Uh, what are the symptoms of Mahatma, great soul? And what are the symptoms of Buddha? That is described in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, it is said that, Aham Sarvasya Prabhava Matta Sarvam Pravartate Iti Matya Bhajante Ma Buddha Bhava Sabarnita. Buddha, this is the very word, again it is used, Buddha. So Buddha, one who is, uh, Learning, what he is actually in sense, he is not nonsense. Uh, he is called Buddha. So, Buddha, what are the symptoms? The symptoms of Buddha is that Aham Sarvasya Prabhu, he knows that Krishna is the fountain head of all emanation. Everything, whatever we find, uh, everything, anything, whatever you see, now take for example, take for example, and in the material world, the most prominent thing is, uh, I would say, unity between man and all that. Now one can infer where from this attraction comes between male and female, not only the human society, but also in the animal society, the bird society, in any society, any living. This is a fact. So, uh, <clears throat> somebody uh, criticizes, but those who uh, do not know Krishna, but Krishna had so many girlfriends, uh, so they are somebody criticized. But one does not know that where we get this idea of having girlfriends, unless the tendency is in Krishna. Because you can have nothing here unless that is in Krishna. But here it is parvata, it is polluted, and Krishna it is pure consciousness, pure spiritual. That is the difference. So one who does not know, they want to avoid something. Nothing is, I mean, it can be, can exist in this material world unless it is in Krishna. Then Mahadasya Jataha. So these things have to be studied very scientifically and, and from books like Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and when he is perfectly 
uh, learn it. Then he hints at me that he becomes a pure devotee of Krishna. Aham sarvasya prabhava matta sarvam pravartate. I am the uh, source, fountain head, Krishna says. I am the source and fountain head like, uh, <coughs> of everything. One who understands this science, uh, then he takes to Krishna. How? Now, Buddha Bhava Samanvita, with full knowledge, and he becomes a devotee of Krishna. Similarly, uh, so far, Mahatma, Mahatma is a Sanskrit word which is uh, used for great soul. Uh, so that is also described in the Bhagavad Gita. Mahatmanasmantha Devi Pradipinastita Bhajanti Ananna Manaso Jatta Bhuta Adunabhan. Mahatma. Uh, who is the Mahatma? Who is the great soul? Great soul is he who is under the influence of the superior nature. There are two kinds of nature. Superior nature and inferior nature. Now we are under the influence of this inferior material nature. And that, by Krishna consciousness, you shall be transferred into the uh, superior nature.